This is the Reluctant Leader Podcast, created because, through no fault of your own, you've become one. I'm your host, Mark Terrell, and I know how it feels when you're getting ground down by people issues, constantly firefighting, and wondering how on earth you ended up here. In each episode, I invite a guest to discuss a topic and give you three, sometimes more, top tips that will help you in your leadership role. They are experts in the field, and you'll find out why they do what they do and what took them down that path. For more resources to help you on your leadership journey, check out the reluctantleader.academy where you'll find details of how to join the Reluctant Leader success path. So let's see who's in the hot seat this week. Today I'm talking to Ian McQuone. Ian's 30 year career path has taken him from engineering through marketing to company director with a depth of experience in business strategy, leadership and corporate social responsibility. He's an optimist and passionately believes that business has a positive role to play in promoting prosperity for all while protecting the planet. He helps businesses to approach sustainability as an opportunity to drive growth, fuel innovation and ignite passion. Hope you enjoy this chat we had about sustainability and I'll catch you all on the other side. Ian, welcome to the Reluctant Leader podcast. Thank you, Mark. It's good to be here. Uh, yes, I'm looking forward to talking about this. It's one of those subjects that gets, it's in the news all the time, isn't it? And um, um, it's one of those things, I suppose, we get thrown information at and we need to try and get a bit of clarity. And so I hope, uh, I'm sure we will, after this half an hour or so we're chatting about it, we'll get more clarity about what sustainability means in respect to how a business can embrace what sustainability is. Uh, and, and put those things into place so that you know we have a more sustainable business and the benefits that go with that. But before Absolutely. we uh, yeah before we get into that, um, the one question that I always ask all my guests is why do you do what you do, and what was that pivotal moment that took you down this path? Okay, so um, before I started my own business, I was a director at Cola Myra, um, leading manufacturer of showers. Um, and um, I was running the commercial business there, selling uh, products into schools, hospitals, that kind of thing. Um, um, and the big moment for me was soon after I got that role, I uh, went with one of my sales team to um, one of the big building contractors' um, offices up in Manchester. And um, when you arrive on these sites, they always ask you uh, to sign in, the name of the company and so on. Um, but um, a new thing there for me was that uh, they asked me to write down the miles, number of miles that I'd driven to get there. And um, this was curious to me because I'd not been asked that before. So I asked um, the receptionist there what that's all about. And she said, well, we've got um, some targets on our carbon emissions, our carbon footprint, um, and we include all our visitors to our sites in that footprint. I thought, well, this... That's interesting. Um, so being a curious soul, I, um, when we got into the meeting with the engineer, I asked him um, what that was all about. And he said, yeah, we've got these corporate targets. Um, and we're all supposed to try and reduce the emissions of the business. Um, but to be honest, it's hard to know what to do about it. Um, and you know, my background um, to that point was marketing. And so my marketing brain starts to fire up here, you see. And I said, well... Well, that's interesting. So I said, if um, if we produce some products that helped you build more um, environmentally friendly buildings, would that make you more likely to buy our products? And he said, absolutely. Um, so that got me along a train of thought that realised that actually we're we're moving into an era where sustainability and environmental issues are actually um, going to be increasingly important commercially, simply because clients want them. Um, and when you actually started to look at the that whole market of um, commercial buildings, we realized that something like 60% of commercial buildings have got an environmental specification, and that's only growing. Um, and that really was a light bulb moment for me to say, actually, what we should do is to put sustainability at the heart of our business strategy and build our products and services um, and our way of going to market around this emerging market, this emerging trend of um, green buildings. Um, but what that um, really surprised me about is once I've done that, it started to generate 
innovative ideas around new products, new services, ways we can do business. But it also got the whole of the team um, energized around it too. Um, because increasingly, environmental issues didn't really matter to people. And so it had a real beneficial impact throughout the team in terms of motivation and engagement, as well as driving a whole load of innovation and a, and a great competitive strategy. So um, that, that got me really down a whole track of starting to investigate and understand what the environmental issues were and how they might relate to business and how business and the environment can stop being enemies that fight each other and actually, um, if you like, work together to create um, a more sustainable future that also helps to drive business growth. Mm -hmm. that, that's really interesting, actually, because that, that's, that's a good story in that, you know, something that sparked your interest there just by asking you how far you're driven. And I think, yeah. it, it's a, yeah. well, it's, it, you know, we are tr creatures of habit and we do things in a, in a way because we've always done that way. And it might be just that we jump in a car to go somewhere where there might be other ways to get there. There might be, you know, a, a bus that's just at the end of the road that would get there just as quick or, you know, take a train on a longer journey, all those things. But if we Absolutely. haven't got, you know, we, sometimes we need someone just to sort of jog our conscience and say, conscience and say you know, um, there is other ways you can do this. And, and so that's, that's a really interesting story, actually. So... Okay, so we're talking about the sustainability here in, mm -hmm. in, with, with businesses, and obviously there's a lot of, it, of information out there. So putting myself in the position of someone in a leadership position in a business, where, where would you suggest someone like that that really hasn't really addressed it yet, where do you think they should start? Okay, well, it's like um, any pr business problem or any problem, before you make a start on doing something about it, you really need to understand what your current position is. So if you're going to build a sales strategy, you'd start off by understanding what are our current sales, um, you know, what's our current profit margin and so on, and actually getting the facts um, on the table. So um, sustainability is no different to that. And so it's really important to try to find a way of um, measuring your current performance so that you know when you make changes, have you improved and how much have you improved? Um, and one of the best ways to do that right now, and a really good starting point, is carbon footprint. Um, it's, um, and, and the reason is because if you do a carbon footprint properly, it touches all aspects of your business and will help you understand um, not just where you're generating emissions from burning fuel, but also where you're creating waste, um, in the thing, you know, where you're creating waste in all the things that you do. And that can really help you target your activities and give you a benchmark uh, to move forward. Um, so, you know, actually, are you making the improvements you think you're making? Yeah. And for someone that obviously doesn't know, as I, I, all I know is what I've, what's thrown at me at, in the news, really. Um, there's two sort of elements here. We think about, um, obviously, recycling stuff, so not wasting stuff, yeah. so not sending stuff to rat landfill. And then, yeah. and then there's also the element of saving resources and not using them in the first place, isn't there? Is there, is there anything else that, you know, are those the, the core two elements or is there a, something else I've missed? I think, there's a, I think there's a few elements to mm -hmm. environmental sustainability. So one is, is climate change and the climate emergency is a big issue that we have to get to grips with. And that's to do with the, the gaseous emissions that we're creating that are driving um, global warming. Um, and, and almost all, or a lot of the activities that we do, um, such as heating our houses, driving around, making products, um, throwing them away, all create emissions that help drive global warming. So that's one of the big issues. Um, waste is another of the big issues, as you say. You know, the um, amount of waste that ends up in landfill at the moment or worse in um, parts of the environment where it really shouldn't be like the ocean um, mm. is shocking and actually um, we've got to remember that the, the the resources on the planet ultimately are finite um, and yet our population is growing like crazy so um, if we keep on just taking resources in the planet and chucking them away we're actually going to you know at some point we will start to um, run out of resources and they'll get much more scarce. So, um, but the two are not unrelated. Um, I saw a recent document from the um, Ellen MacArthur Foundation 
um, which, which showed that 55% of our global warming um, uh, or emissions come from um, energy creation, which isn't, you know, isn't a surprise. The, for, the other 45 emissions come from um, products, uh, manufacture and use and disposal. So the, the two issues of reducing en emissions from energy and reducing emissions by cutting down waste um, are directly related. And they're really the two big mm. issues, I think, that we've got to get to grips with. Yes, yes. And, and I guess um, you've sort of alluded to it already. Uh, and it's if you're going to introduce this into a, a business environment, um, the, the place to start is presumably um, is, is, is in your values. It's how you trade as a business and have some sort of reference to su sustainability in those values so you can then um, trickle them down throughout the organization. Uh, that seems to be the obvious place to start. Is, is, that, what, is that what you suggest? I think so, because mm. um, you know, we've seen increasingly the issue of greenwashing, and um, people are not daft, and they recognize very often whether when businesses are um, don't really mean it, and they're just doing right. something for a little bit of publicity. I was just wondering what greenwashing means. Basically, basically, that's when companies aren't really, a, um, they're just using it as a PR stunt or a gimmick. Is that right? Exactly. And right, I think yeah. it's, pretty, it's, it's usually pretty easy to spot. Hmm. So you're absolutely right. You have to get your values right in the first place and ask yourself, do you actually mean it? And are you going to get behind it? And ask all of your employees to get behind it um, as a core value of the organization. Um, because your employees will spot it too. And if, if you don't embrace it as a core value, then what happens is what you do doesn't align with what you say. Mm. Because, you, know, you, you, you can say we're going to get more sustainable, but if you don't hold it as a real value, then what you do is actually all the decisions you make will drive it in a different direction. People spot that very quickly. So you're absolutely right. Mm. You've got to start with the values. Mm. And with an honest appraisal, do you actually... Do you actually mean it, and, and and what does it mean to your business? Yeah, and there's lots of obviously implications once you go down this route, which will there will be costs. That's the thing with any business. The first thing that most people will focus on is what's the cost of this. Um, mm -hmm. And I know we've talked about the cost of the planet and all that stuff, but when you're running a business, that isn't your immediate concern. What your immediate concern is is you know what's the what's it going to cost? What's the impact on my bottom line if I start to do this? Because as we know, most things need an investment up front. Uh, so it costs up front, but actually from that initial investment, then you get the payoff in future years. And, and, and I guess that's something that you have to sort of address uh, in, at an early stage. No, absolutely. Um, mm. So there are costs and there are investments involved. At the same mm. time, there are great benefits to be had too. Mm. So, um, you know, there can be costs in, um, say, investing in um, – uh, re renewable energy or um, lower energy equipment or removing waste. But almost all of those projects, if you do them, if you look into a medium and long-term view, um, are ultimately going to save, likely to save money. So there might be some upfront investment, mm. um, but there's money to be saved along the way. And um, if we want to create a business that's sustainable for the future, we'd hopefully be looking beyond just this year and we're looking into three or four or five or six years and that's when the benefits can start to come from a cost saving but i think there's a much bigger benefit for a lot of businesses and um, putting aside the cost issue which is that both consumers and business customers want to buy sustainably and i think cons they're ahead of of a lot of businesses so you know i've seen surveys recently with as many as you know three quarters of customers and three quarters and similar number of business buyers um, really puts sustainable values at the heart of their buying decision. And so if you can respond to that and demonstrate genuinely that you're trying to operate more sustainably and trying to offer more sustainable products and services, then I think it's a great opportunity to grow your business, which is what all business owners, all business leaders are trying to do ultimately. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you alluded to there, really, it's actually starting with what your clients want or your customers, isn't it? And finding out what they, they, they really value and, and, and obviously deliver something around those values uh, would be a good, good place to start.
Yeah, no, absolutely. I, 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 I'm really one of the things I say a lot when I'm talking about this is stop thinking about sustainability as a cost and start mm. thinking about it as a business opportunity because it really is. Um, people, you know, as I say, consumers want to buy it. Um, but you, as with any business opportunity, the best place to start is by understanding what your customers really want and really need. And so, um, you know, start that conversation with them. Don't be afraid to start that conversation. Even if you haven't done a great deal at the moment, um, start that conversation in a low key way because you'll start to understand what matters to them. And then you can tailor your sustainability activities in a way that really matters to your customers. And that's going to be the key to making it um, truly you know, sustainable for your business because it, there's nothing better for a business than delivering um to your customers what you what they're looking for mm. and as you alluded to earlier as well and when you talked about you know um when you had the experience with the um how many miles have you driven and you asked the question of why are you doing this and then you sort of then you carried on and thinking about well what the implications of this then actually mm. the implications are if you can actually think about your offer and that, that it is sustainable then that opens up a new market to you doesn't it it, it does, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that to me is the key to actually making a more sustainable economy and a more mm-hmm. sustainable way of moving forward is it has to work for business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so if you think about how can, how can we move sustainability from the realms of doing good what some organizations call corporate social responsibility, how can we get that closer into the heart of the business and actually drive growth from it? Because that way we have a much bigger impact and, 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 um, and we'll be much more committed to it because we can see the, the business benefits that it's driving. Yeah, and it becomes like a natural thing we do all the time. It's like, Absolutely. Uh, and, and everything we do, how does this um, affect our sustainability? And is this good? It's, um, how is this going to be viewed? It's like, you know, having a, a policy about, um, you know, l- low carbon and, and all that stuff. And then, you know, your corporate, you know, the, the CEOs, um, flying around in a in a, a private jet, you know, yeah. it just doesn't. It's not. It's, it's going to shout. Well, you obviously don't believe in what you're what you're saying. You're just doing it just because you think you're going to make more money. It's not really something you believe in. Absolutely. Yeah. At the same time, we shouldn't be afraid of making money from it when mm. we're doing it in the right way and for the right reasons. But that's yeah. what I was talking about with greenwashing earlier. If you say mm. one thing and do another, people yeah. spot it very quickly. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that's the whole point, isn't it? It's it's deli- it's getting to a point where people understand it's it's an opportunity. It's not. Yeah. Yes, there's going to be a ve- there might be some investment up front, which with anything, anything that's good, whether it's new equipment or those things that that you have to invest in. But ultimately, you're you're going to get a payback, uh, yeah. and and, and sure. that's what most businesses are going to look at, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, and, and we shouldn't affect, also forget the payback that we get personally mm-hmm. um, as business owners in knowing that actually we're helping to create a future that's more sustainable for the next generation too. Absolutely, you know, yeah, yeah. The business owners that I speak to, that's, that's actually a really important motivator too. Yeah, yeah, and they've, if they've got family and what have you coming along and they think, well, I want to do my best uh, to show, show the way and, and it's about introducing new habits that hopefully people will carry on and that's, sure. that's the thing, isn't it? So I wonder yeah. at this stage you could share maybe some, some, some stories of you know, the sort of work you've done with your clients and how you've helped them you know, to, 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 to sort of embrace this sustainability. Sure. Well, I've been um, doing some work with um, a uh, family-run business in Tewkesbury called um, The Name Label Company. Hmm. Uh, recently, they make um, personalized name labels for clothing and the like. Um, <laughs> Um, and, but they're really, um, Matt and Emma, they are really committed to, uh, making their business more sustainable. And they asked me to help them, uh, as a starting point to calculate their carbon footprint. Um, because you know, they, they recognize, um, the benefits of doing that, as I say, that getting that stake in the ground and then knowing where to go. And it's, it was quite an eye opener, I think for them when I, uh, talked them through the process to realize there's something like 18 different categories of, um, um, of emissions creation that we uh, that we potentially look at. Not every business will be um, creating emissions in all those eighteen categories. Mm. Um, 
it's a little bit more complex than we thought. But yeah. um, and they realised. But the advantage of what they did say is, I'm so glad that it's as thorough as this because we don't want to be just paying lip service here. We really want to make a difference. And by delving into every aspect of the business, this is going to help us to do it. So I thought that was a wonderful uh, way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. And then and, and I guess you then help them implement, start implementing how they can start reducing whatever that figure was once you've got well, to be, that figure. That'll, yeah. be the, that'll be the next stage. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we've just finished um, the actual first stage, the calculation piece. Mm-hmm. The, ne- the next stage is then to decide actually where do we go next with that. Yeah. And, and obviously it's important to be able to measure up front, isn't it? To see where your starting point is. You, again, you mentioned it earlier. If you know where you are now, what, you know, what's the reality now, then whatever you put in place and then you remeasure, then you can see the, the difference you've, you've made. And then that yeah. makes you feel as if you've made some progress, doesn't it? Exactly. It's massively motivating. And I, I mm. honestly believe that there's a huge change in behavior that happens when you measure something and put a number on it and publish that. It, it, it dramatically changes the, mm. um, you know, the pace of change that you want to make because all of a sudden you're seeing that number. Um, and it can help you target a little bit more effectively. It's very easy to suddenly say, okay, we want to get more sustainable. Um, and we can think of this, 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 that, and the other. And you end up with a great big long list. And then, well, gosh, how am I going to do all of this? Mm. By being a little bit more uh, judicious about it and do, making the measurements first, you can then more easily choose, ah, okay, now I can see that these are the three things that are going to have the most impact. Let's do those first. Yeah, so it's, it's quick wins you're looking for, isn't it? In most, again, um, business mentality is that you want to see the biggest benefit as, as soon as possible. And if you can get there and find out where you can actually, you know, focus your energy uh, to get that outcome, then all, all the better. I, I, th- yeah. I think it's about having a good mix. So you want to see some quick wins that get momentum. Mm. But you also probably want to have a mix of items that you know are going to take two or three years to come to fruition. But when they do come, I've had a much bigger impact. And mm. I, you know, as a as a business leader, I think it's important to have um, a good mix of the two. Yeah, and are there, are there typical things that for most businesses always come up that that um, you know you can almost guarantee that they're going to be key things that they can do straight away? Um. So the, the big items are typically any, any business that has premises, you're looking at heating and electricity, mm. uh, big ticket items. So um, moving to um, renewable electricity supplies, a lot of the, it, it's now relatively easy to move your electricity supplier to one who's producing all renewable or a mix of renewable electricity. And that's a, mm. and it can even, switching can even save you money sometimes. So don't necessarily assume that that's going to be more expensive. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, a relatively easy thing to do. Um, another low hanging fruit, if you've got um, premises and you haven't done it already, is LED lighting. Um, can reduce your electricity bill for the lighting substantially. Um, mm. And the payback periods are often only about around about a year or less. Yeah. And there's some quite um, good schemes around at the moment, I've noticed, with, with those sort of things. People will put them in and, right. you know, actually, you don't have to actually find the money up front. There's all sorts of things going on that uh, encourage you to make that investment without having to find, find the funds. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll come yeah. Up. yeah. yeah. There's, there's grants, but there's also right. commercial um, businesses who are um, offer that. Um, they'll, they'll fit the energy saving equipment and actually pay for it out of the savings. Yeah that are generated so yeah there's plenty of options around for relatively quick wins yeah so if you if you if, you know if you haven't got the money to invest then there's actually options where you, you you may not have to actually put your hand in your pocket up front there might be ways to get around this so no, just, yeah, I, I think that's, that was worth worth sharing because i think um, yeah. you know if your funds are a bit tight then you know you think well i can't do it until i've got the money well actually you know let's break down some barriers and say well actually yeah it's not all it's not, not all about um, spending a lot of money up front, you can actually get investment in a different way by, um, you know, people having, you know, putting the equipment in like you just suggested, and then they get their payback from from the savings. So yeah. it's, it's been in, innovative, isn't it, around these things? It's actually been innovative about how you can um, introduce these new concepts or new technologies to get things moving um, and, and breaking down barriers in some situations, isn't it? 
Yeah, no, most definitely. And, um, you know, involving your employees is another great way um, of spotting ideas. Um, mm. When I was, when one of the great experiences I had, um, where is it, Myra, we um, run a project called the Eco Pledge. And I, I've got to say, I can't claim uh, credit for this. This was a, a predecessor who started this, but I helped to continue. Um, but the idea was that the business um, put aside a fund of £100,000 for projects that would both drive sustainability improvements, but also save costs. And um, this, we really thought that that was going to be a challenge to, to spend and generate um, those savings. But actually, within the first year, we just opened it up to all the employees and said, just come up with ideas. And within the first year, over £300,000 worth of ideas were generated. And second year, it was close to half a million. So, wow. um, and, and these were ideas that were sitting on the table that were in people's heads, but for some reason, they hadn't felt able to, um, uh, to uh, articulate them. So um, the, it was amazing, really, the, the opportunities that were there. Yeah, so that is amazing, isn't it? And you know, the payback there is is enormous. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it reminds me of that. Uh, what is it? Some of the um, I, I'm not sure whether I'm right in saying it's Google or one of the big companies. They they give their um, employees twenty percent of their time is to to spend on anything that they feel that they want to um, yes. that might be, might benefit the the, the business uh, and. It's a similar sort of scenario, isn't it? There's some funds, do what you yeah. do with it, and then see what happens. And it's amazing how creative people can be. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, many heads are better than one. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm spending a lot of time thinking about that because what we, um, you know, what we, we stifle creativity and innovation by bringing together too, too many people that are like-minded. What we really need to, to do yeah. is bring together people that are from di diverse backgrounds, different age groups, all those things, and then give them the same problem and see what happens and yeah. interact those ideas and see what comes out. And it's amazing how those, that can have a massive effect on, you know, what comes out and, and, and the ideas that can be, can used is, is, is immense. It is, yeah. And that's why I love running workshops with clients as well. And what mm. I find is the best participants of those workshops are the ones who are skeptical at the start, who mm. are voicing, are you really sure? Is this right? Um, do, you know, is, are we going to be able to do that? Because once it, you can get them engaged, actually, um, they're often the ones who actually have some of the best ideas, but also help you test the ideas so that they become more robust, you know, so um, mm. that diversity of thought is really critical. Totally yeah, agree. and that's a, that's a good point, actually, because we're all, you know, you've got some people that are a bit gung-ho and they'll do change for the change's sake because they, they embrace everything that comes along. But then you also need that mix of people that are actually going to question and say, well, just hang on a minute, let's just look, look at this a bit more carefully, check this, whereas some people wouldn't bother checking. And it's very important to make sure that actually it's getting the result that we actually set out in, to do in the first place. You absolutely need both. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a good, a good balance. Um, so, Ian, unfortunately, we are rapidly running out of time. These half an hour <laughs> seem to fly by. Um, um, so we get to the point where um, we want uh, to think about some top tips uh, for the listeners to take away after listening to this um, sustainability topic, which um, hopefully we can sort of distill some some um, clarity as to how people can walk away and start thinking about how they can introduce this. So what would those, those top tips be from, from, from where you, where you are? Yeah. So I think we've already mentioned top three, really. First mm -hmm. one for me is know your footprint, know your carbon footprint, because understanding where you're starting from is really important. And then you can understand the improvements that you make. Second one is, you know, Think of sustainability as a business opportunity, and so start by asking your customers what does sustainability mean to them and what matters to them, and that will help give you ideas about um, where to take your business forward in a way that will help drive growth because you're responding to the needs of your customers. Um, and the third one we've just been talking about there, in involve all of your employees in the efforts because that diversity of thought and opinion and experience will take you will give you results that you never dreamed you could have for sure mm. 
Fabulous. Great sum up there. Um, so, Ian, thank you very much for your time today. It's been really interesting. I'm sure listeners got great value and maybe start to think in a different way about what sustainability means and hopefully um, bring that into the, the working environment sooner rather than later. Well, that'd be fabulous. And um, thanks for inviting me, Mark. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to check out the Reluctant Leader Academy. And if you get a chance, please leave a review on whichever platform you have been listening. And also share the love by sharing the episode with someone who would benefit. Leadership is a choice. If you have the right mindset, know the process to follow and the key skills to use at each point in the process, you have everything you need to leave a lasting legacy. Don't forget to put into action anything that has struck a chord in this episode. And until next time, be the best you can be.